I, I thought uh, this would be a good way to explain the final simulation if you're not getting it on your computer. I'll just kind of go through what you would see if you were doing it and then I can share with you the data I get at the end because it doesn't so much matter you know if we all use the same data set if if uh, somebody else does it have different data that's fine I mean it, it's all random anyway and you'll get the the gist of it so um, I'm just this is Camtasia it's kind of nice to use this program so this is a, a simulation of the Deming funnel experiment and uh, I, I, I like this this simulation because it, it lets you see the different rules and actually collect data and then do a little bit of analysis on the data at the end um, so I already have the file and uh, what you would do is open it and then choose this funnel experiment simulation and I went ahead and asked you to um, read the blue screen so I think I don't know if you'll be able to see them or not maybe I could just read them to you quickly and then we'll start the full the four different rules that we talked about in class so um, actually yeah here comes up the first rule when you go to do this it says during his seminars Dr. Deming used a simple experiment to de demonstrate some fundamental points about variation Dr. Deming suspended a funnel above a flat surface which was marked with a target that's what we we're doing in class Marvels were dropped through the funnel and the landing positions were marked on the surface. In order to keep the landing positions as close to the poss as possible to the target, four, four rules have been proposed for shifting the funnel between each drop. This simulation is a similar type of experiment using a one-dimensional landing plane, which I think makes it easier to see. Both launcher and target use center zero scales. The program automatically moves the launcher according to the four rules. I'm going to leave the number of shots we're shooting at 100 and go ahead. Uh, rule number one that we're going to use first is don't move the launcher. You're going to shoot it at the target. It may be short, it may be long, but we're not going to um, move the launcher. Okay, so I don't want that. Um, okay, so here we are. Um, this is rule number one. You're shooting at target zero right here. You might be a little short, a little bit long. You're not going to move the launcher to compensate. So I'll shoot a few. Yay. Okay, there we are. Um, I think it says, um, yeah, shot landing position was at two, so you're a little bit over. Um, 20, negative 26, negative 42, negative 32, negative 35. 42, negative 60. So as you just see, I just keep shooting single. The, the cannon up here is not moving at all. Um, I think you probably get the gist. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot 10 at a time, kind of quickly, another 10 at a time. Let's just go ahead and shoot the last 68 all at once. So there they go. And rule number one is finished. Okay. So before I do rule number two, let me go back to the assignment. Um, so all I was asking you is to do rule number one. So you would have seen what we just saw. Um, consider were there any unusual shots? Let's go back. I can kind of um, look through these, but I mean, there's variation. There's nothing. Uh, there was a point there. It seems a little bit high or low, but. I mean, nothing seems really terribly unusual. I mean, if we put, had put three standard deviations on here, it doesn't it doesn't really look strange to me. So there's our first set of shots, and I think we're ready for rule number two. But um, I might have passed that up since I didn't show you. Oh, there it is, rule number two. So um, on the assignment, I ask a couple questions. Um, what type of variance did you see when we ran rule number one? Did you see common cause or special cause? And now I'm going to try to improve with rule number two. Um, now after you shoot the ball at the target and you miss the target, you're going to compensate by moving the launcher in the opposite direction and length in which the previous ball missed the target. Um, this one, again, rule two and rule three, I always have to watch a few times, but big deal they are going to be shifting with either respect to the target or with respect to the last drop but the idea is they are the tar the um, cannon is going to move about to try to hit the 
target more accurately. And then again, same question, are there any unusual charts? You know, did you reduce your variation? So let's look at, uh, I think I'll have to do rule number two. So move the launcher by the distance the previous ball missed the target, but in the opposite direction. Rule two attempts to move the launcher to compensate for an amount by which the ball missed the target in the previous shot. Fire another 100 shots, file single shots until you see what's going on, and then go ahead and let the launcher shoot the rest. Okay, so here we are. It's now green. You can see that all those results were blue. So let's shoot a couple to get the idea. So we shot one, negative eight, and so this guy moves to position eight. So shoot again, and now we're at uh, negative 15. So move plus 15 from the previous position. So we were at negative 15. Now move from the previous position plus 15 would put us at plus, ooh, let me see, did I say that wrong? We were at negative eight. Yeah, so we should move um, plus 15 from that. So see, we're a little bit positive now, probably at about, oh, you can hardly tell. Let's try again. So go ahead and shoot. Um, totally it lands at negative 21. So I'm going to move plus 21 from the last position. Okay, not from zero, but from the last position. Let's shoot again. Oh, no, change color scheme. Keep crown. Don't show this message again. Good. Um, now we're at 38. So we're going to move negative 38 from the last position. So this is where we're landing. We're going to move 38 negative from there. Okay, so let me see. Now we're going to move 52 positive. You can hardly see that the target's just moving a little bit, but you know it's not starting at zero there. So right now, there was nothing too extreme. Okay, yeah, now, so we were at 90, move 90 from last position, negative 90 back. We're starting to move in the negative range. But right now, nothing big. We're staying right around zero even with our moves. Yeah, now we got two positives in a row and we moved back negative. So you can see now we're a little bit negative. Now frontwards again. So you kind of get this idea that, yeah, I, I think you can start seeing when we're off like that. Negative 165, we would move 165 positive from the last position. So let's just shoot them all at once now. You can kind of get the idea. But, um, Rule two has now finished. Before we go on to that, um, I think it's interesting to compare. There were the blues where we weren't moving. And now here are, come on in green shots. Here are the green shots. And you can just see from that chart. I mean, when we're on target, okay. But once we start to get off a little bit and you start adjusting, I think you can see these numbers are a lot bigger than we were getting from the first rule, a lot a lot more variation if you ask me, but I guess I'm answering questions for you. So back to this, um, did you substantially reduce the variation by using this adjustment? And I think you can tell the answer to that. Um, and then I just wanted to give you a real world, for you, uh, I'm giving you a real world example and then asking you to give me one where you make this kind of adjustments. Have you ever done this? with something you've made or done or some kind of sport or activity or anything you could think of. So um, next I'm going to do rule number three. It's hard again to tell the difference, but we're going to move the launcher relative to the target position of zero and not with respect to the previous position it landed. So it, that's a little bit different. I mean, if you're off 15 right, you're going to go 15 left. If you're off 100 left, you'll go 100 right. So it's just with respect to zero. And um, let's get this back up here. It should say it again. Rule well, number three, where are you? Um, I don't see rule number three. There it is. Okay, so move the launcher to the point on the scale, which is in the distance. The previous ball missed the target, but in the opposite direction. So it's just a little bit different than two. Now you're not moving with respect to where it was last sitting, but with respect to zero. And so maybe you'll get to see that. Let's go ahead here now in yellow. 
is rule number three. So negative 37, so move to position 37. Uh, you're 14 over, so move to position negative 14 when you shoot again. Uh, negative 34 to move forward 34. Um, 78 over, move 78. Yeah, so this one's I think easy. You see zero, you're either moving back and forth with respect to zero, not with respect to the last position. Let's shoot the rest of those. Wow, I mean, I think you can see the difference there. Um, that's pretty nice to see, right? I mean, wow. So there was, um, well, blue was when we didn't move. Green was with we move with respect to the last position. Now yellow, we're moving um, with respect to zero. For a while, we were doing quite well. We were pretty tight. And then, uh, I don't know, after about uh, 36 shots, you can see, you can get this very back and forth pattern that's zigzaggy then, because you're moving with respect to zero of the previous shot. So I think you can see there's just a lot of variation there. So back on my homework set, let's see. Um, Rule number three, yeah, I mean, what's the difference, biggest difference between rule three then and rules one and two? Um, I hope you're noticing something about mean and variance in that, and then again, give me example, or that was a actual problem. Uh, last one is rule number four, it's do as I do. You're gonna move to exactly where the ball landed and shoot there, so this could go awry fairly fast. And if you did this on your own, everybody's going to have a little bit different results because it's supposed to be a random simulator in there. So, I mean, we're not all going to have the same values here, except when I send you my data. But if you did it on your own, don't be like, oh, I can't believe I didn't get the same thing. Um, well, number four, is it going to talk about it? Um, I don't know where we have it. Hmm going through everything again. Well, I guess the easiest way to say four is it's do as I do, so that's what's going to be happening. Um, let's go back to the simulation. Oh, why? I know it won't let us start till we see that. Oh, here's rule number four. Move the launcher to the point on the scale, which is the same as the landing position of the previous fall. I'm going to move to exactly where it landed. Okay, so um, I guess we're white now, so Here's one. Uh, it landed at negative six, so it's going to move to position negative six to shoot. It landed at uh, negative six again, so we're going to move to position negative six, exactly where we were. Um, now we land at negative 21, so we moved to negative 21. We land at 66, so we moved to 66. Land at negative 42, moved to negative 42. We hit at negative 80, so we moved to negative 80. So, I mean, we can go, this could be okay for a while, it's just the problem if you start going negative, then there's a tendency to stay negative or go more negative, because you're already in that negative area. You know, like I'm going to be shooting from negative 106, it's more likely now I'm going to start moving a little bit, little bit, little bit left um, for the next several shots. So let's go ahead and shoot the last. As you can see, that's exactly what happened. I couldn't have explained it better. Um, so here are my results. Um, let me do a screenshot because then I could even send those to you. Um, let me send myself an email. Wow, there's a lot going on here, but I just don't want to lose that later. So there will be my screenshot and you'll be able to see exactly what I got. Um, let me go back to the assignment now. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm asking here is just put in the mean and standard deviation and that's going to be the email I send you because I went ahead and took a screenshot of that. Uh, what is the only rule that doesn't experience dependency from point to point? What's the only rule where you have independence? One point is not dependent on the other. Um, three of those rules have dependency. One of them doesn't. Um, yeah, what can you conclude then from this experiment about making adjustments to a process that's pretty in control and just has natural common cause variation? List me a couple things there. Um, after you finish rule four, go to charts and select control charts. We're going to do an X bar and R chart on a sample size of four. Okay, so I might have to come back to this to remember, but... Um, OK, 
Okay, so I'll go to charts, control charts. I want to do an X bar R chart on a sample size of four. Okay, there are my charts. Um, you can see them throughout the whole process here. It's very nice. So um, there's rule number one. So for the first 100, the next 100, the next 100. Yeah, so for all sets of 400 shots, you get to see the, the mean. I'm just thinking about this for a second. X bar, I thought we averaged four. So one, two, three, four, five. A one. Okay, so this will be four, 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 four. Right, there's a set of four in here. So we should have like 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's right. Every one of these is four shots in it. Four shots, an average of four shots is what this X bar. So you take four shots in a row, average them, you get that point. And this range down here is the distance be between the largest shot, the max of those four shots, and the min of those four shots. So what else did I say about this? Um, let me see. Uh, after the control chart is constructed, go to the Calculate Lines menu and calculate the control limits for subgroups 1 through 100. A type of out of control charts. Okay, so let's go make control charts. So um, calculate lines from 1 to, if we just made it from 1 to 100, which should be fairly in control, there's our control charts and the lines, and I think this is very interesting. There is rule number one. Rule number two didn't do too bad with respect to the average, but look at the range of points. Um, in a set of four points, sometimes you are out of control. Um, let's keep going. Yeah. Rule number three, again, when you average it, not so bad. I mean, because you could be averaging highs and lows and still be on target, but look at that range, the distance between the max and the mins. Um, and now rule number four, wow, we went, I mean, here's your X bars, the average is totally out of control, but there, um, the range chart's not so bad, but think about it. I mean, if you're following yourself in four points, I'd say you'd be pretty close to yourself most of the time. I mean, the range of four points where you're following each other isn't bad, but the average would be horrible. So I wonder what colors does. Oh, well, it's just kind of cool. Can I get a table of this? Oh, maybe I will, but not to, you don't need any more time to see that. Um, I think that's it, really. Um, I can go ahead and uh, I'll send you the means and standard deviations and everything that I got. So let me know if you have any questions. I'll send what I just did. I hope that gives you an idea, especially if you weren't able to download this. Um, it's a little bit longer than I thought, but hopefully you'll be okay with that. All right, um, I'll see you tomorrow.